Hey guys, welcome to DevOps School. These days, everything is happening in the cloud. Cloud computing is a big shift from traditional way businesses think about IT resources, and Amazon Web Services is the world's broadly adopted cloud platform. So today, we are going to learn about AWS. You can join our all training programs globally through online platforms and if you are looking for classroom workshop then we have regular batches available in Hyderabad and Bangalore. Check out the dates and enroll with us for our upcoming batches. For more info link and contact details are mentioned in the description below. So let's get started. So uh, the objective of the sessions so in next three hours we are going to talk about like uh, we are going to start with the cloud computing and then we will also discuss about the, some of the architecture related stuff and then we're going to discuss about the AS and PAS and SAS as well and we're going to uh, discuss about the, the differences between these models and also some of the cloud computing advantages what we're going to discuss and then uh, users, uh, computing users and things like that. Okay, so what is cloud computing? And cloud computing is something like a place where uh, you can get the desired hardware and software based on the demands. So how this this is coming and we, the, how this is evolving. So if you remember the old uh, old uh, the 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 way we were doing the software development and the, the way we were consuming the hardware resources. Like uh, remember in 2000 or 1990s, uh, once we need a hardware or software, uh, what we used to do? They used to buy the hardware like. Uh, uh, boxes like uh, Dell boxes, HP boxes and things like that. We call it a physical servers and we used to get it. But uh, what was happening at that uh, model was like uh, utilization of the physical servers. We were having the consumptions which is very less. So probably if you are having a 10 gigs of RAM and 100 gigs of hard disk at that time, probably if you look at the average utilization, it is very less because probably it's not more than 10% or 50%. So people have realized like they cannot, they cannot continue buying the physical hardware, hardwares. The organization has realized like, you know, the growth, uh, the, the consumption is growing like uh, anything and everyone is moving towards the cloud they, everyone wants to store the files and there are you know uh, pictures and a database and many more things uh, on the net rather than they are uh, storing in the hard disk so uh, so that is where the the optimization for the physical servers uh, 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 has started uh, and becoming popular. So since then, we have got the virtualization with the many uh, concept like we got the many hypervisors like uh, let's talk about like VMware, which is one of the popular. Zen, we have a virtual box and many more hypervisor which has come and they started offering the virtualization environment. In that, uh, what you can do, you can uh, you know you can have a sort of uh, uh, physical servers and in that you install the hypervisor and then in that you can have as many virtual machines you wanted and that's the way uh, people started uh, you know uh, started maximize the the consumption of the hardware resources and that is how the virtualization uh, concept got introduced but with the cloud computing when uh, virtualization has become very popular then peer people realize the importance of having the the data somewhere in the uh, in the cloud and which can be accessible based on the demands which can be accessible based on the demands anywhere so and you can scale up you need more you can get it more if you need less you can configure less you pay only for those which you are using so not only the storage but also you can set it up the networks storage servers you can have any number of applications as such so that is the kind of requirement what we started getting okay and that is where the the, the boom of the cloud computing uh, become very popular so now uh, many organization has come up and they start setting up the uh, environments uh, where they can you know offer the stories they can offer the CPU processing computing which we call it computing and they can uh, offer the application based on the demands and uh, that is how so overall like it is a kind of evolutions where we want to you know utilize the hardware resources to the maximum extent and also same time we want to store most of the data on the somewhere in the cloud so and which can be accessible in from anywhere and uh, so that is how the evolution got started so 
so what what exactly how it is impacting to the teams like how it is impacting to the uh, you know art teams like a product software development teams like how is impacting to the managers developers and many more so if you look at the your utilization uh, let's talk about in terms of few uh, QA needs hundreds of servers developer needs uh, uh, you know tons of uh, servers or machines or infrastructure and IT team also do require a lot of server requirements so they want to uh, they want to imp uh, improve the those infrastructure and they want to uh, extend their infrastructure based on the demands and whenever the demand is not there they also want to reduce the things so how can it be possible uh, you know how can it so cloud computing is the kind of solution which is being uh, which is being we are going to discuss and how we going to how is going to help each and a few like developers managers software teams and end users how is going to help you uh, that's where we are going to discuss about it so uh, as part of the cloud uh, architectures uh, if you look at the normal uses, what you do, you have a storage, you have an application, you have a platform, uh, software platforms, you have a desktop servers, so all these things which we can put it on the cloud, everything, networking, routers, switches, everything we can set it up in the cloud and the how can we access just it need require the internet connectivity. So now, you know, uh, there are any, many concepts which is flo floating in the in the in our domains like world of computing it's like you know how what is a is hybrid uh, devops pass you know so many things and again we have very limited time where we can uh, be we will not be able to get into this thing but again uh, when we talk about artificial intelligence big data machine learnings you know devops uh, uh, is and pass and saas and so many things which we are offering uh, these are the services we want to off offer that and all these services require the greater amount of uh, computing power greater amount of storage power get greater amount of the reporting power you know all these things require the greater amount of uh, uh, the computing storage network uh, and uh, processing so how can we get it that's an important question because now we are talking about the devops now we are talking about the uh, the, the 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 is now we are talking about the uh, artificial intelligence and big data and that require the process data processing speed and we did it now probably we don't need every day we, we need it probably for some hours a few hours in a day or probably few days in a week uh, probably we need a few months no but not every time in the year so we should extend we should Im immediately last our services to the extent where we are we can use it and then we can reduce the infrastructures the if you don't need it so it's kind of things which is being uh, provided by the cloud so uh, now let's talk about the models what we have in it so in the cloud delivery model we are having the SaaS software as a services in that we are offering you know uh, many services like you want the software which is available right now and you want it if you don't want it don't use it so that kind of infrastructure which can be available on the, over the cloud we are also providing the platform as a service like uh, you know we need a whole platforms like uh, uh, whole database services to be built database application servers hosting platform networking everything to be built so you want to provide as a platform you also provide the infrastructure as a services like where you want to provide the virtualization of the desktop internet availability and billing model and many more things so these are the model where we talk about the saas pass and ias so these are the model which basically which has been empowered by the cloud models so uh, that's how it is and then uh, Again, uh, on this, we have an infrastructure, platform, and software. So these are based on the cloud model. So you can you can see on this image, like you can run the applications in the cloud, you can run the data, runtime, middleware, operating system, server, storage, networking, almost every solution which you can offer on the cloud platform. So, uh, and some of them are is being called as an infrastructure as a service, some of them are being as a called as a platform as a service, some of them are being as a called as software as a service. So basically in a nutshell, you can provide the infrastructure in the cloud, you can provide the platform in the cloud, and you can provide the software as, uh, in the cloud as a service. And that's the kind of things which you, we have it.
So, uh, so what are the characteristics of the uh, cloud computing? So, there are various characteristics uh, we have here, and one of the important things like on-demand self-service. So, you need it now. I I get it now. If I don't need it now, I just uh, obliterate the things. So, I don't have to pay for the things which I don't need anymore or which I'm not using anymore. And again, a broadband network access the way you want it, the, the kind of speed you want it, resource poolings, rapid elasticity, and measure, measured services. So these are the characteristics of the each uh, model what we have in the cloud computing. Okay, so what are the benefits? So benefits, uh, as you can visualize that, like benefits are endless. Like we are moving from the physical servers to the virtualization and from the virtualization we are moving to the cloud environments where we are having the complex infrastructure in place and it's available for the anyone is uh, users. So those who need the infrastructure in terms of computing, storage, processing, uh, reports, monitoring and many more things uh, as a service, as a platform, as a software. So you can get it and the, you can pay for only for those things where we are, you're using and if you don't use it, you can, uh, you know, just avoid this. So basically, I, and uh, ultimately it will help you in terms of saving money, data, time with the cloud computing and most important part, integration between the each of the things. So uh, there are many benefits which we have it here. So now we did discuss about the cloud environments where we discuss about some of the model characteristics, advantages, and things like that. So uh, what is uh, AWS? What is AWS? So basically AWS stands for the Amazon Web Services. Again, it's like uh, Amazon, who's the company name, who's having the N number of cloud services. They call it Web Services. It's a secure cloud services platform offering the compute power, database to storage, content delivery, and other functionality. So basically, in a simple way, if you want the compute power, which in, in terms of CPU and memory, you can get it. If you want the storage, you can get it. If you want the networks to be set up and the security to be in, in, uh, implemented, you can get it. So everything, you can get it over there as you need it. And you can scale, maybe it can, you can down downscale and you can upscale based on the needs, based on your growth. So these are the services in terms of compute, storage, networking, security. These are the services which has been, been provided by the Amazon on their own platform. And anyone can use it based on their needs. So that, that's just being called as Amazon Web Services. Okay. So so these are the sort of services these are the kind of uh, these are the kind of uh, uh, services what we have and now if you look at it the, the model what we are seeing on the screen uh, this is the page you will get it after the login into the aws so once you get logged into the aws you will see something like this so you have a, a compute and if you look at the sections here you have a one section that is called compute other sections which you 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 get it a storage third section which you being called as a database networking administration and security deployment management analytics for the big data and related things uh, application services here as i said like AWS not only provide the platform as a service, but application as a service, software as a service as well, mobile services as well, enterprise. So these are not the complete list. Let me tell you, we have more than uh, 200 plus services being, which is being offered by the Amazon AWS services. So basically, this is some of them. And this, we are going to talk about some of the features, and I'm going to show you the demo as well for some of them. So important things, why we need a AWS. So some of the points we have already discussed, but these are the things, these are the bullet points which you can discuss like easy to use, flexible, cost effectiveness, reliable, scalable, and high performance and secure. So we get it everything. So if someone is scared about, you know, data security, AWS has a kind of mechanism where it can, it can store not only your large amount of data, but also it can secure it. Okay, uh, it is reliable, it is cost effective, now this is one of the most important feature and it is easy to use. So again, I'm going to show you that how you can use the AWS and uh, get the things up and running. So again, it is, uh, it is been charged based on your uses, basically where you use it, so you pay only for the uses 
not for the any things like uh, in that case if you have a requirement only the certain infrastructure and uh, you avail the infrastructure and probably suddenly your requirement has grown to the certain labels and immediately in in case of physical hardware scenario you will not be able to scale it up you will not be able to last but here you can immediately uh, you can uh, scale it up and then you, once the requirement is over maybe scale it down so these are things which is being offered by the AWS so we call it elastic like the way you want to elastic the services okay so this is the company which has uh, you know used actually basically uh, uh, these uh, AWS services these are the major companies actually which has used so the next question which is coming is like AWS cloud has solution for what okay so now we, these are the, some of the bullet points. So you can use AWS for hosting your application, websites, uh, anything. You can use for the backup and recovery. You can use for the archiving the file systems. You can use for the disaster recovery. You can use for the DevOps. We can use for the big data and you know the big data's processing is very large. It requires the hell lot of processing speed, memory, CPU and storage as well as uh, huge terabyte of the information is available to process it is lost span of time so basically you have uh, big data you can use for the financial services high form high performance computing digital marketing e-commerce media entertainment mobile services. so now you can see that all the bullet points you can almost use AWS cloud solution for any of your requirement whatever you are in finance domain you are e-commerce domain you are in IT domain you are in any DevOps big data artificial intelligence or machine learnings any domains you can use AWS solution and they have a solutions for uh, dedicated solutions of your problem so next thing is one of the important cons concerns what each organization is having is like security how AWS is secure so basically AWS is a multiple layer of uh, multiple layer of, layer of the security mechanism in that you can set it up your firewall you can set your security groups you can you know assign the permission based on the keys and many more things security measurement is there so basically AWS is secure and I'm going to show you some of the demo as well in that we're going to talk about how you can set the security groups, how can you set the firewalls, how can you set all these networks, you know, and inbound and outbound connections and things like that. So it's very much secure. Okay, so what are the infrastructure you have? So basically if you if you talk about the infrastructure uh, and here you can see that uh, the reason okay so here uh, they have uh, these many reasons and when we say reasons like these many in a simple word you can say like uh, these many data centers these many large data uh, I would say it would be wrong if I said that data center it will be like a group of data centers okay at each region so you have uh, so many reasons which you can see on the screen right now and for now we have around 14 reason with AWS and uh, some of them are still coming up we have one reason in Mumbai as well okay and then uh, other reason in uh, USA Europe China and many a part of the other countries as well so uh, this is how they have the infrastructure located across the globe and that is how where you can get this thing so if you want the if your team is located in india or probably if your team is located in usa you should, you should select the region which is closer to your your workplace so that way you can uh, latency you can avoid the uh, network delays and things like that okay so how can we get started so basically um, with aws so understanding the reason is very much important because uh, reason is something like uh, it's a kind of you know place where we have multiple data centers and you will not be knowing like where these data centers are and then uh, these are uh, basically and each reason is separated with the uh, uh, it's like a different uh, data center I mean different logical units actually so probably you you may be able to handle uh, a whole infrastructure and access on the AWS services from the one log in the different different log a uh, different different uh, reason but, but actually each reasons are separate logical entity in terms of computing in terms of storage in terms of networking in terms of security and many more things okay 
So yeah, so now we are going to talk about how can we get started? How can we get started uh, with AWS? So basically, once you are going to start, so first of all, you're going to create accounts, okay? And then uh, you're going to create accounts and anyone can create account on AWS. Uh, they have a free tier uh, schemes, which I'm going to show you some demo on that as well. And then uh, they require the, your credit card information. So it's like this. They want you to learn the platform. They want you to learn the, all the services on the AWS, which they provide free of cost, but until you use their services, which is coming as, as part of the free tier. If you are trying something beyond the free tier services, it will be charged. So basically, they have a very basic uh, services which they are offering as part of the free tier. And you'll have to you know, start using that to learn and get comfortable with the things. And once you realize the importance of the AWS and the power of the AWS and they, once you started enjoying the services and then it started fulfilling your objective, then you can go for the more than uh, free tier because free tier literally will not help you to serve any purpose. Basically, you'll not be able to use it for your production servers or for your any task, but only for the learning purpose because they provide a very less computing uh, uh, speed for the, each of these virtual boxes. So again, yep. So you get accounts. Anyone can get accounts, and then you have to ins insert the payment information, which will be a Mastercard or a Visa card. It should be credit card, and then uh, you sign up for the desired services. And after that, you'll have to get a keys, private keys and public keys, and which will get it. You can generate it automatically. And after that, you can start, you know building your infrastructures, deploying the application in the, the infrastructure, start monitoring it and do start doing the scale it up down, scale up and scale down based on your requirements. So that is how it can get started with this one. So till now, what we discussed, what we discussed like, we discussed about the cloud computing, we discussed about the the architecture, we discuss some of the morals, we also discuss about the advantage and then we discuss about the some of the things which we can do with the AWS. So, before going uh, further, do you have any questions here? Okay, so uh, we have a question from the Vishwanath. In a region where there is only one availability zone there, then where is the backup done? So basically, uh, the region will have or will must have at least two availability zones. And that's the requirement. So uh, availability zone is something like a different uh, uh, location, different location for your data centers, okay, in the same region. So uh, each region will have a minimum of the two availability zone, okay. For instance, a Mumbai region. It has a two availability zone, but it can have a more availability zones also. So whenever you create an instance or services in one region, uh, one availability zone, automatically this get uh, uh, backed up and things like that on the other availability zone. So that way they have uh, the information uh, backed up properly and you can get it as you need it. So there's one question from the Madhusudan, when they charge while using AWS. So as I just said, you have a many services though you have a more than 240 services on in on aws platform and there's one called free free tier services so if you're using the free tier services that's not been paid and that is also available only for the first 650 hours or probably 750 hours okay after that everything will be charged on aws Okay, so you'll have to look at it. You'll have to while using the services, you have to carefully look at it, their services, and you have to also understand the terms and conditions whether the services which you are using is a free tier or not. Okay, if it is not a free tier, then you should, uh, you know, uh, with you should be very careful while using those services if you are you, you don't want to pay for it. Okay, so uh, there's one question from the Samulai. What is available in the free tier? So I'm going to show you this demo again in some time. And uh, free tier, which they provide the basic, what uh, basic basic machines, basically basic server, which you can configure with a minimal uh, CPU, minimal RAM, and minimal storage. 
So probably you might not be able to use it for the your server requirement, but you'll be able to use for the learning purpose. So becoming very familiar with the AWS platform and so on. Okay. Okay, so this one question from the Randir. Is there any possibility if the team changes to the different country to avoid the latency? Uh, I couldn't get your questions what you are trying to say like if T changes the different country to avoid latency. So let me tell you once you create accounts at AWS, you can create a AWS, you can use the AWS resource and in any of these reasons. Okay, any of these reasons. But with the saying that all these reason, reasons are separate uh, physical entities. So uh, you will not, it's like if you want to have a same network with the two different reasons, uh, same servers and all, you might not be able to get it. You have to do some more, much more work on that. But these are different isolated logical environments and uh, you can get it. So, Vishnath, um, will you be covering the DevOps topics today after AWS? No. We are going to talk only about the AWS today and tomorrow we are going to talk about the DevOps uh, things. So I'll talk about it, okay? So now back to the demo. So now I'm going to show you the demo on that and I'm going to use one of my accounts here. So first thing, as I said, you're going to experience it here. I'm going to log in. And I have accounts here already. So I just logged in. And once you log into your accounts, okay, and you will get something like this. So you, you'll see that, right? Here you have uh, all the services, which you can see it here. I click on the, the box. And then here you have a uh, all services and inside that all services, you have a compute section, you have a developer tools, internet of things, storage, database, networking and content delivery, management tools, some of the reportings and uh, monitoring tools and things like that, security, identity compliance, analytics related to the big data, artificial intelligence related to the machine learning and things like that, business productivity, messaging, application services, mobile services, and app streaming and desktop streaming and many more things. So these are the sections we have it. And accordingly, you have a solution. So now, if you wanna check it out, how you can get started. So basically you have to start with the, one of the models like you want the servers, you want the virtual machines to be up and running. So how can you get it? So one of the services which we use for the get the virtual machines in the easiest way, we use the compute and we use the EC2. And this is the place where you get the virtual servers as many you want. You want one, you want 10, you want thousand, you can get it, okay? So now what I'm going to do, I have got these accounts, I have inserted my credit cards, I have logged in into this. I got this dashboard after this ver verification of the email IDs and this is the dashboard you're going to see that and everyone is going to get the same dashboards and anyone can register at the AWS platform. It's not only the accessible, accessible you will be given to only two companies. Anyone can register on this platform. So now I am going to get the servers up and running. So I would require some of the servers so I can work with it. So what are you going to do that? So you're going to start with, and I'm going to convert that into the steps basically. So first thing, you're going to use the EC2, Elastic Computing 2 version, okay? And in that, you're going to create a virtual machines. So let's say virtual machines, I want to create with RHEA, and I want to give one GB of RAM, probably 30 gigs of hard disk, okay? And then probably one CPU one CPU. So I defined this is the VM which I need it and this is the decisions you'll have to make it. Virtual machines I want, the servers I want with RHL operating system, RAM should be one GB, hard disk should be 30 GB and one CPU. So what I'm going to do to get these machines up and running, I'm going to create, click on the EC2.
okay and now here you are going to click on the launch instance okay so you can see that this is the if you click on the ec2 you will f find a lot of options you know two running instance zero dedicated host zero volumes two key pairs zero placement groups elastic ip snapshot load balancer security groups so i'm going to talk about all of this but let's get started at least first okay so the my requirement is very clear we have so many features we have so many functionality we have so many services at aws we are not get you're not going to confuse with it but the, we let's stick to our requirements and i my requirement is we need a server with RHEL, 1 gigs of RAM, 30 gigs of hard disk on CPU. So I just click on the launch instance. And instance is something like an EC2 instance you want to. Now, this is the place where you have to decide which operating system you want. And if you look at this tab, left hand side, it says quick start. In the quick start tab, they have given you, AWS has given you so many operating systems. So if you look at it, this one. They, they have given you, you know, Amazon Linux, they have uh, Amazon, it's, Amazon also have a, they have one form of Linux, RHL 7 you can use it, Suzy Linux you can use it, Ubuntu you can use it, Microsoft also you can use it 2016 and many more. So they have given you for many operating systems. One important thing which I have to look, look, at, look at it, whether that is available for the free tier or not. And if you look at it, this one message, free tier eligible free tier eligible free tier that means these operating system which you can see as part of the free tier eligible you don't have to pay for that so you don't have to pay for their license or do not have to pay for anything as such but if you go beyond the free tier so just let's check it out this one is not free tier okay this is not eligible for the free tier so in that case the cost will be added you know for your accounts okay so Look at this. Most of the these are not free tier, but again we have got the one free tier here. Okay, so like this. So you have free tier that means only for the trying for the free uh, services. But if there's no free tier, it will be chargeable. Again, quick start has been given by uh, the Amazon. What about the my AMI? So when I say AMI, it's basically nothing but the Amazon uh, machine image. Okay, so it's called. Amazon machine image. So if you do not like any of these and you have a, some customized image, you can have it here. Okay. So as of now, I have not created anyone. So I don't have it, but you can create your own images on uh, you can keep it as well. So you, you bootstrap using the quick, uh, quick starts and create your own images and keep it under the my image. So next time you don't have to create the same thing again and again. You can use it, the your own images from this place. As of now, we have none. Okay, you can also get the images and when I say image like operating system and their configuration from the marketplace. So AWS has a marketplace where you can get the n number of images from the marketplace. And these marketplace, some of them are free, some of them are paid, depends on the what kind of software, what kind of services you want, what kind of configuration you want. Some of the pre-configured, they'll give you some of them, they will charge and stuff like that. Okay, so here you can, uh, get the from marketplace here we call it a community mis community mis is like a complete like uh, given by the aws community and they have created a vm based upon the some specification and then they have converted into amis popular amis and then they have given to you so you can use that one also and you can look at it you can filter it out all this operating system from the left hand side you can look at it and then architecture with a 32 bit 64 bit and things like that and ebc yeah i'm anyways i'm going to talk about okay so this is the things which we have it now let me click on the quick start back to the, the the tab which we were having and now i just said my requirement is to get the rhl so now i have a rhl and i select and it is a 64 bit rhl 7.3 which is a kind of latest and then i'm going to click on it and this I this is the this image ID that's important so select now here they want you to select what is the processing speed you want what is the processing speed you want so here again if you look at it here you have a family uh, general purpose type what are the configuration CPU RAM and 
kind of storage we want to talk about again. So what kind of uh, uh, instance type you want it. So here if you look at it, only you have only one instance type which is free tier eligible. Okay. Mo apart from this, whatever you created, it is going to charge you. Okay. And again, the charge, the cost estimations, you can get it your, your own. There's a calculator which is available on the Google and based upon the users, you can get, uh, you know, analyze how much it will cost you for the user. Okay, so this, if you use this version, is going to cost you. But if you use any of these versions, which is small, medium, large, x large, and all this stuff, is going to uh, charge you. But the thing is, with this uh, T2 micro, you have one CPU and one gig of RAM. Okay, so which is something like uh, you cannot use for your production server because one gig of RAM is nothing. Right, so let me get started with this, this machine only and I click on the next. And now here it is asking you how many number of instance you want. Whether you want 1, 2, 5, 50, 5000, it's asking you how many of you want it. As of now, let's say I would like to have only two. Okay, and then that's all. Now, this is very interesting feature. And here I got one message. You may want to consider launching these stands into the auto scaling group to help the maintain data. So this is just uh, you know tips which will give you. Now uh, purchasing options. This is a very exciting uh, feature what we have with AWS. And here it says request spot instances. So when you say request spot instances, it's like this. If you if you click on this then there's no guarantee you will get this two instance. There's no guarantee. So this spot instance is like a bidding. Okay. It is a bidding. You are, you are starting the bidding. Like uh, what happens, let me tell you in a different perspective. Amazon, every time in each region, they have, they make available some of their infrastructure as part of the bidding process. Why? Because if they see like, you know, my utilization is very low, I have, I'm not getting the right number of users to utilize my existing infrastructure. So some part of their infrastructure, they make it free of cost, almost free of cost, not 100% free of cost. Like, let's say if you are charging one rupees for the one machine, okay, so in the spot bidding, you'll probably you are paying uh, 10 paise or something like that. I'm just giving you a figure just to make you understand situation. So part of their infrastructure in the each region, they, they, they make it available for the bidding process. And here is the case. If you are the number of two server is not very much important for your uh, production instance or for your any having dependency, you can bid for that. And uh, trust me, you'll pay much lesser than that what usually you'll have to pay. But as of now, I don't have to worry about because it's already I'm using free tier, but sometimes what you need, sometimes you need a big data processing, artificial intelligence, where, where you need a tons of CPU immediately. But uh, again, uh, your organization set the limitation like you cannot cross this budget. You have a limited budget for that. So what to do about it? So in that case, you can use this request spot instance. You just want the processing speed. So you get it at the very lower cost, provided Amazon has this kind of uh, infrastructure available in that bidding process and you get it. So in that case, you have to select it. But as of now, it says there's no spot capacity for the instance type 2 micro in availability zone. Simple logic is simple because anyway it's a free and again they in this availability zone they are not providing this uh, feature so that's very much fine okay now next option is networking so what is this okay so let me tell you this is one of the very exciting features so now everyone who gets the accounts at AWS everyone by default they have a network set up for 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 their all all of their servers so basically you are getting into the accounts and you are configured with the one you are pre-configured with one of your network setup which is done by the amateur so that means your network is different from the other networks other so if you have hundreds of accounts thousands of account on the uh, on the on the on the on the uh, uh, AWS and even though if you are using the same availability zone, same data centers, your networks are different. 
maybe you are in the same region maybe in the same data center maybe you are same in server same physical servers but still you will not be able to see others data why because here you have a virtual private network which has been configured for the each accounts by default so at least one virtual private network will be configured and that you cannot delete it you cannot avoid it by default you will have to respect their network so that way there's a beauty here because that way your data is not being shared with other other users data though they are into the same availability zone same data center same servers also only this makes them your data and their data different from the different network okay so we vps so let me tell you you can create your own vps basically you can create as many network you want it and you're going to create a subnets accordingly as you want it and here you can see that we have around three availability zone you can see that you waste you waste one B, one C, and one V. So basically, I'm as of now I'm trying in the Ireland, uh, uh, Ireland region, and that's the reason I'm having three availability zone. If you if you go and try the Mumbai region, which is a little bit more costlier than the Ireland region, uh, here there you can see the two two availability zone basically. Okay, so this is the stuff. So again, in order to set up the VPC subnets and all this stuff, you need to understand the basic of networking. And probably in that case, you'll be able to do properly. Okay, so now you have got the network, which is by default, I have got it. Subnets, let it go with this uh, default subnets. And here, if you ask, auto assign public IP, so here, if you make it enable or disable, it's up to you. So I'm going for the enable options. And here I am role. So I'm going to talk about this I am role uh, again. And again, I'm going to talk about the public IP as well because you want to discuss about the elastic IP address and things like that. But again, I am role is something like this. Uh, it's like this. You have a one account, okay, probably for your organization. And in your organization, maybe 10, 15, 20 people are working together in your organization. So basically your AWS infrastructure has been managed by not only by you who's having the account owner, but also you guys have a database servers, you have IT servers, you have a DevOps servers, you have a build and lease servers, you have a QA servers, you have a uh, reporting server. So you have a sort of all this sort of infrastructure which is available at AWS. So the important thing is like how can you give the dedicated access to the each of these users? Because QA should not be able to access the dev servers, dev should not be able to access the DevOps servers, DevOps should not be able to access the operation servers like that. So how can you set the privilege authentication authorization in AWS? So basically this is the way you can set it up. So you're going to, you're going to set it up as of now I have none. Okay, you're going to create it but as of now I don't want to get into but we will do that going forward. Okay, so this is the place where you're going to set the IAM role and you want to define like which user, which user is having what sort of access and all the stuff. Okay, and set down behavior stops, let it make it. So it's like this. Once you set down your VMs, what should be done? Whether you want to terminate the VM and stop. If you term, if you shut down it and if you want this to be terminate, you have to select the terminate and if you want to make them stop, you have to select the stop. So this is how it is. And monitoring. So this monitoring will be enabled once you want to monitor using CloudWatch. CloudWatch is another another service which is provided by the AWS which can monitor your services, whether the service is up and running or not, if the machine is up and running or not, CPU is adequately uh, okay, RAM, storage, all sort of things, you know, it is going to monitor. So basically, whether you want to enable for these two servers, you want to uh, enable the CloudWatch or not, it's up to you. As of now, I don't want to. Okay. And tenancies. So basically, uh, what kind of tenancies? And if you're going to discuss again, this tenancy is shared dedicated in a while while talking about the storage and things like that. Okay, so now we have discussed about what are the configuration we have like number of instance to purchasing options. I don't want to go for the bidding to reduce the cost because anyways, it's a small is I'm paying free tier network. I've got it by the AWS. I have not created any one subnets, got it from the network which has selected. I don't want the uh, uh, the uh, disable options. I should get the public IP address. I have no IAM role which will define the access mechanism to the each of these services and things like that. And then I click on the add storage. 
So till now I decided the computing. Now next thing I am going to decide what is the storage. And let me tell you, here you can add the storage. So basically in the last form which I selected like a computing, like a CPU, operating system, RAMs and things like that. And how many servers you want to uh, create it. But in this form, you're going to select that how much storage you want to give to each e e EC2 instance, each servers basically. So by default, if you see that here, it says the device is mapped, is going to be mapped at the, this location. Okay, this is going to create a snapshot of this name, with this name. Okay, and basically what is the size which we have got it, 10. And what is this general purpose SSD? Again, we're going to talk about the, uh, the storage in detail going forward. But here, general purpose SSD, let's be by default. IO ops, input, I, output operation per second. Here, you're going to also define like your storage kind of storage type. So here it can vary from the 100 to 3000. So IO ops like input, output operations, Per second okay so quality of the storage you can select it okay here you can also define what kind of you know if you want the high IOPS then you'll have to pay um, more than but here is the case if you are using the free tier account then only the 30 GB you are allowed to use it if you increase more than 30 GB okay for the general purpose SSD then it will come out of the restriction of the free users tier eligibility that means in another way you have to pay for it and uh, AWS deduct the money automatically from accounts okay because while registration they you guys have given the credit card information so now I'll go with the 30 gigs of hard disk uh, 30 gigs of uh, storage uh, by default this and done now next form is tagging and tagging is one of the most important uh, features what you have now let's say you are having thousands of machines and you want to tag you want to give them name actually so that way you can uh, you can you can uh, you know see that uh, which is for the development which is for the integration which is for the staging which is for the production which is for the operations which is for the it which is your application server which is your database server uh, like that hell lot of scenarios logical naming logical groupings uh, you want to set it and these tags will help you here you can set the key name and their values and based on these tags you can you know probably do the queries later upon the time and then take our decisions on that so this is one of the important features where you can say like okay this is my database server or this is my Jenkins server or this is Jenkins node or this is my processing servers or anything as such okay so like that or application servers like that and I'm not going to set as of now it's not needed and then Next one is security group and this is where I told you like AWS is providing a very nice mechanism to store your uh, to sec secure your infrastructure and this is the one of the ways out of many in order to secure the infrastructure. We have so many other ways like setting up your own VPC, setting up your private and public subnets you know uh, and uh, many more like a VPN and many more things we have in, in this uh, uh, platform at, at this platform so basically you want to use it but this is something like when I say security groups is something like a firewalls so I'm sure you might have heard about the firewalls many times like firewall is where you you know open the ports allow the port disallow the ports block the ports and things like that you know so this is something like that you know configuring the security groups so here you can select the one which is existing but you can create a one so let me create a one new one security groups and i'm going to name it skill speed okay and i have uh, skills i have got this uh, naming uh, done and description i'll put it like uh, demo for skill speed done okay so i've got the created one new skill speed i'm going to click on okay but i have not I, it's not been created it's going to be created in some time but the important things like what you want to open what you want to block it so if you look at that here rules you can see a lot of rules are there you know 
if you see that RDP which is with the 3389 default port, if you go with the SSH which is the 22 port, if you go with the HTTP which is like 80 port, which is going with the HTTPS or something like that, which is the 343 port. So these are the popular ports which you want to set up whether you want them to allow or not. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I am going to I am going to uh, allow two ports as of now SSH because I am going to log into this machine that's important and one more rule I am going to allow HTTP so here I am going to select the HTTP and 80 port so here these two ports I want them to allow from anywhere and here remember you can also set that whether you want the range to be defined like only few operating a few uh, IP address subnet should be allowed to access these two ports that also you can set it up here you can provide the range here but as of now to go with it anywhere okay and that's the best way okay so now I set this two port SSH and HTTP 22 and 80 respectively and then I'm going to launch things so this is the summary which I set it up I set the free tier eligible T2 micro uh, one CPU one gigs of RAM EBS 30 GB Two ports I'm opening up, instance details are here it is. All these stories I've selected here as and tags I have none and launch. So once you launch, you have set it up everything. Remember, you've set it up the operating system, you have stayed, stay, uh, you have uh, talked, you have uh, selected the uh, the processing speed, CPU and memory, you have selected the 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 storage, you have selected the all the sort of things like networks and subnets and everything you have selected. But important things like how can you access that machine? That's a question like, okay, you got this machine and that's not there in your network because you are accessing those services through some of your machines, which you are located somewhere in the USA, India or any part of the world and connected only via the internet. How can you access those servers? How can you access those machines? So there's a two ways. One is like a key ways where you can access those machine through keys. Another way is like through password and as of now we will not get into the password sort of things because that required a number of other steps to be followed but let's start with this keys concept how can you access the the the, the AWS resources using the keys and this is where you're going to look at it and now you're going to start with the keys so now if you click here I'm going to create a new keys and I'm going to create a new keys with skill speed this is my keys name actually and then I have to download it and I'll have to keep it somewhere and remember this keys is very very important because if these this keys are being compromised then anyone can access all of your servers without any uh, issues and they can do everything so this keys has to be very secure okay so once you create this keys I got this and I'm going to copy here and then I'm going to put it under the skill speed directory. I put it here and then I am going to launch it. Remember this keys which I created and downloaded which will work always to access all of these resources in future. Okay, so now it says your instance is now launching these two ID which got created this is the instance one this is another instance two and as of now done and now let's click on the view instances now you can see that I had a two instance which was running in my box which is this one so let me rename this two instance and I would say old and I'll make it this one old two old one let's make it so I've got the two instance which was running earlier and this is the two stance which I am created now scale speed one I'll just name it scale speed two so these two machines you can see this is the T micro this is the look reason this is the running state it's initializing this is the public DNS address which you got it these two are IP address key name which I set it up and then 
which I downloaded, this is the keys using that I can access and monitoring is disabled. When did I launch and what are the security groups it's falling? So it's falling under the skill speed. So I created a new security group in which if you remember I have two exceptions, one for HTTP and 80, with 80 port and SSS 22 ports and then everything is good. So now we got this machine up and running. Okay, so next stuff is how can you access it? How can you access these machines? So one of the ways you should know, if you want to know that username, that's important because you have got the keys, but you don't know username and you want to know the username. So username keep varying actually sometimes, not always. Usually it is EC2 hyphen user, but sometimes they do change that. Sometimes you find the uh, administrator as well, and sometimes you find something else. So the, the best way to get this stuff, click on the instance, go to the action, click on the connect, and see that. These are the steps you'll have to perform in order to access these machines. Okay, so remember, this is the SSH protocol using I and the PM file which I downloaded and this is the host name. Host name or IP address, it can be anything, okay? Host name or public DNS and all. And this is the username, EC2 hyphen user, okay? So this is the way you can access using SSH using the keys which you have downloaded. Okay, but normally you do not do SSH. You do something else. And what you do? You use the putty. So there's a different way to try it out using the putty. So I'm sure how many of you are using putty rather than SSH? Can you just tell me? Everyone almost must be using the putty or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So like this. So now, if I'm going to try it out, because if you are using SSH, you can use this command, it will work perfectly fine without any issues. You have a keys, you have a, uh, a public uh, DNS address, everything you have it, but we are going to use the uh, putty. So the I open up this console only to know what is my username and my username is EC2 hyphen user. You can see on my screen. So now I've got the username which is EC2 hyphen user and now I am going to open up. So remember in order to, in order to using the, use the putty to access these machines, you have to convert PM file to PPK file and that's important. Okay. So you have to convert PM file to PPK file. So how can I convert that PM file to PPK file? So basically in this case, there are many utilities which is available, but one of the other utility which is we have like partition. Okay, so partition will help you to convert the permission file to PPK private file. Okay, so I'm going to use the same thing. So let's use it here. I've got the partition here and I'm going to conversations, import keys, and my keys are into skill speed. Here's my keys and then I import it and then save the private key. Yes, and I'm going to save the skill speed this time PPK, okay? So now PPK. So now just for your confirmation, we have got the PPK file here. So we got the PPK file and now that's what it, it was required for the PIP party. Now I got the IP address as well. So let me get the IP address. You can use this host, public host name or IP address. Any one of these will work. So, okay. So that's not a problem. I have got this IP address. I have got the PPK. Everything is done. So here it is the information, username. EC2 hyphen user key, you got the PPK file and host name or IP address, which is this one. So now using these three information, I am going to log in using putty. So let's open up the putty console and I am going to use this IP address, host name, put it this host name 
and then go to SSH, click on Auth, and this is the place where you're going to give the PPK file. And go and locate the PPK file, and I have created it under the skill speed directory, and it should be here. And this is the web. And now click open, click open, and now it's first time it's asking you whether you want to add it. Yes, of course. And the username is ec2 hyphen user and keys is already I have passed it using auth and now I have logged it. Okay, and why I was allowed to log in? Why? Because you remember in the security group security group I had opened two ports one of them was like 22 for SSH and another was 80 port for HTTP okay so now if you look at it I was doing SSH I was allowed to do that because of I open up 22 ports if I'm not open up I would have not done the SSH here okay and that's the reason I did uh, SSH now you logged in using EC2 and uh, you want to do some operation in this machine. So let's do, let's say like uh, you want to do yum. First, let's do the sudo and root. So I logged in as a root. So now you see that I have logged in as a root. Now I'm going to install something. So let me install HTTPD. So yum install HTTPD. HTTPD is a, like Apache, uh, Apache web server. And you know that, right? So I'm going to install using yum utility and those who are coming from the Red Hat background or CentOS background, they must be knowing like APT is a repository management system and uh, using that you can install, uninstall, manage the applications in RHEL and CentOS. So now you can see that I have installed the HTTPD in this application and the application is here. Now I want to check whether HTTP is running or not. I did not run it just the way to find it out. HTTP is running or not. It's not running. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a system CTL command. System CTL command and start the HTTPD. HTTPD is a service name and it's got started right now without any error and you can see that. So remember HTTP by default, okay, HTTP by default open up with the, uh, runs with the 80 port. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type the IP address which is here, okay, and enter. So 80 ports you don't have to mention. Look at it. So it got changed, 80 ports I'm able to access and cool. Now what happen if you go back? So now I don't want to I don't want to allow the ET port to be accessible. So what should you should do that? You should go to this place and you should click on the security groups and if you have you have a security groups which is skill speed, click on the skill speed and security groups you have to edit again and here in inbound, here it, you allow HTTP. I am going to edit this one and I'm going to delete the HTTP, save it. So I'm just block the firewall, 80 ports. I don't want people to access 80, 80, 80 ports anymore. And now if I just refresh this page, it sees it's trying to connect, but it's not able to find the right resources. That means AWS has blocked the access. So security groups is one of the important features in which you can access the, uh, the you know uh, networks and security and many more things okay so this is the EC2 introductions and I'm going to talk about much more the thing uh, much more than this, this uh, but let me address the, some of your questions what we have so I'm going to take uh, questions uh, from okay so there's one question from the Barun uh, you said APT, but using yum in CentOS RHL, but it's used in Ubuntu. Yeah, that's correct, Varun. Uh, APT is being used in Ubuntu, uh, in Debian, and yum is being used in the RHL and CentOS. So I am you. I have used not APT. I have used yum. Probably I might have said it APT because I am frequently using these two operating system. So probably maybe. Okay, so uh, any other questions you have? 
uh, yeah, there's one question from Naga. How come we patch these OS whether they are Windows or Linux? How can we patch these OS whether they are Windows or Linux? So when we talk about the patching, so it's like patching like you are updating the kernel. So if you look at the kernel modules update procedures, you'll be able to patch it. Uh, so it's it's not nothing much about it because here in uh, RHL what you do, you basically update your YAM repository and you get the new kernels stalled and configured and uh, compiled it and then you re reboot the machine. So that is how you do that. But in Windows, it's uh, differently. We do, do it through uh, update manager. So these are the things which you can do that. In in fact, in uh, Linux also, we, we do that through yum. Uh, so if you want to, uh, if you want to make sure that all the packages up and running should be up and running with the uh, latest one. So you, you do nothing but you yum update and then done it's being done so that way you can so this way you can address the things now there's one question from the randhir ec2 user is a root user can we lock it no ec2 user is not a root user okay ec2 user is a user which has a pseudo privileges Okay, so if you want to do some activities using EC2 user, you have to use sudo. But here what I did, I logged in as a root. No, first I logged in as an EC2 user and then converted my access to the root using sudo. So that way I did it. The next question from uh, Anatony, how to import DV to the server? So importing is, is like this. Uh, most of the questions are similar, I would say, in, in, in nature. Whatever you do with the re real servers in your in your boxes, in the physical servers or uh, in the virtual servers in your workstation, the same thing you do here. There's no difference because these are the servers you have a complete control over here. So you do whatever you want to install, uninstall, do SQL dump, you want to export the DB, you want to import the DB, you want to copy some files, everything is remain same. The most important things is like you have an address, IP address, you have a username, you have a keys and using that you can access the way you want it. Okay, so the way you want it. Okay, so Next question is, can you please explain once again for Windows? So yes, I, I'm going to show you the Windows as well. I'm going to show you and demo on the Windows as well. And then we will uh, see that. Okay, so just wait for some more time on the Windows demo. Okay, so how can we change, uh, there's one question from the Varun. How can you, how can we change server reason once creating it? Ha, huh, this is important question. So once you have created uh, machines, in one region, you cannot migrate the same machine to different region. Okay, again, I'm returning. You cannot migrate it. Again, what you can do, you can create a AMIs and you can create recreate the infrastructure similar to the, the one which you created in earlier region. But both reason, when we say reason, it's like a logical different entities. Everything is different. Okay, so. You should not confuse with that. Okay, any other question? So there's one question from the Mukesh, does AWS provide auto scaling? Yes, of course, because that's the reason. That's one of the most important reason we are using AWS. Okay. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I can see that uh, I'll take up one more last question uh, from Mukesh. Is there a limit of total number of instances you can create in the free tier? Yes, there is a limitation actually in the free tier. And again, this limitation is not same for the every user. For me, I have set limitation for myself around 40. So that means I can create 40 uh, free instance at once and I can create and I can run at once if I create more than 40 Let's say 41 then it will not be allowed So what you can do for the this this limit is different for the 
all users. So what you can do, you can uh, open accounts, you can get the accounts verified, start using it. Once you feel like you need a more machines, uh, which is not allowed, so what you can do, you can go and talk to the support team, and which is here, support center, okay? Click on the support center, and send them an email saying that I want to increase the capacity of the, my servers, okay? And here you can create n number of tickets, create a tickets, and here you can say, I want to increase the service limit, and they will do that based upon your authentication of the accounts. Okay, so now I'm going to spend some time showing you the demo for the Windows. So till now what we did, we are going to, we have uh, done the uh, Linux demo. I'm going to repeat the same things in Windows because the, in nature, Windows are a little bit different than uh, the Linux because in Linux we, disk, we log in using the SSS protocol, but in Windows we use the RDP protocol, which is completely different. So we need a little bit different things. So now I'm going to start with the launch instance one more time. And this time I'm going to select the Windows and which is like a Windows Microsoft Server 2016 base. And here is the one I'm going to select. And here again, I'm going to select the T2 micro with one gigs of RAM. I know it will be very damn slow, but uh, this is what I was allowed uh, to use it in this demo. So I'm going to use the one CPU, one RAM, uh, one gigs of uh, um, memory and click next. Again, the same thing what we have discussed already so far and click on the storage, 30 gigs, add tax, security groups. And remember, I don't have to create the security groups right now because I have already created one for the skill speed. So I'm going to use one for the skill speed, launch, and here it says the warning you will not be able to connect to this instance as AMI requires 3389 to be open in order to have access and that's natural because as I said we access the Linux machine using the port, uh, the port number 22 for the SSH RDP that's runs on 3389 so that need to be open up so this is a warning you can still continue with it okay and then I'm going to launch it and the keys which I want to use it, uh, the one which I have created for skill speed, which is here, and launch instance. Remember, your port for this RDP is 3389, and which you have not opened up till now. So what are you going to do? Meanwhile, this machine is getting initialized. I am going to open up the port under the security groups, inbound, edit, add a port and which is RDP 3389 and from anywhere save it done so that's the one thing which I've done now I click on the EC2 dashboard five instance running one of the running instance which should be in Windows and this is the Windows which is getting in a slice so I'm going to give the name actually Windows Done. So I've got this machine. This is the IP address, and I'm going to log in through RDP. So how do you log into the RDP? So you call the MSTSC. That's a way remote desktop. When you say RDP, like remote desktop connection, RDP, remote desktop connection. And this is the place we're going to type the public IP address. Enter connect now you don't have a username and password that's a point how can you get the username and password and just now you can see this initiating the remote connection so basically uh, this is going to take a little bit time because still is I believe is initiating it here And let me try one more time. 
and if it's not allow RDP, then in that case, there's one scenario which can be applicable here. Let me discuss. Here, you see this, it's not allowed. So my system is almost up and running. I can see that. And I got the almost confirmations because, but the thing is, I set it up, the, I set it to the machine first, and then I added the protocol later. Okay, and that's where these machines could not open up with the remote desktop connections. Okay, so there's a, some changes which has to be done be, during the initialization and those things which was missed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly create one more instance. And and I'm going to name it this one Windows 2 and I will wait for it and remember I got this IP address which is here but I'm yet to get the username and password so I'll I'll wait for a few seconds because I will Windows is taking more time than you know uh, than Linux because Linux boot up very fast but Windows boot up so very slow and on top of it we have only uh, 1 GB of RAM assigned to this whereas we are running the Windows 2016 which is a, a, con a high consuming uh, operating system uh, memory consuming operating system so we're going to wait for a while Okay, so now I am going to try it out, this machine, and it's a Windows 2, and here it is. Let me copy this IP address. change I'll wait for some more time still in slicing yeah so it's going to take some time in Windows as we everyone knows that. Now we got the IP uh, username and password. So where, from where we're going to get the username and password? That's the question. So the same approach which we're going to follow, just click on the VM which you want to get the username password. Click on the second option, which is like a get Windows password, okay? If you click on the connect also, you'll get it the, uh, the password. But if you want to get the only the password, then you click on the get Windows password and this is where you want to decrypt. So as of now it says password not available, what are you going to do that? So you click on this connect and then what are you going to do? You click on the, here is, is your IP address. This is your username and here you have to get the password. So how can you get the password? First you have to upload your public key and here it says, please wait at least four minutes after launching the instance before trying to retrieve the auto-generated password. So now it's saying like we'll have to wait for four more minutes before we can generate the password of this machine because as you, everyone knows like it takes time. Windows 2016, we have only one GB of RAM and still processing inside it. So it's going to take some time while. I, uh, while. So meanwhile, what are you going to do? I'm going to answer some of your questions and then uh, probably that will help you and we can utilize the time to the maximum extent. So any questions which you have, 
which you want to ask me? Any question? Okay, so the question I'm going to get it from Mukesh Kumar uh, on the okay, it's getting refresh on the scaling auto scaling part. Uh, it let's say okay, I'm not able to read the question because it's moving so fast, and your question is bomb getting bombarded with the, and replacing my earlier question. So let me just make it a little bit bigger this window. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to read out uh, this. Uh, if let's say I have one app running on the three instance and all my three nodes go down, does AWS span up three more instance automatically with the application deployed? Yes. Okay. So you understood very clearly. You what you have to do? You have to create your own AMIs, Amazon Machine Image, and you have to set into the auto scaling mode. And in this case, if you are the if you have set up the three servers and these servers is not responded by the uh, and reported in the CloudWatch, Auto EC2 uh, AWS will automatically create the replacement for these machines and make it available. So that's called auto scaling. Okay, we'll have to configure it. So this is one question from the Murli Krishnan Krishna. Once we've done the basic configuration, can we clone these instances? Uh, once we've done the basic configuration, yes, of course, you can do the clone. Basically, that's where that uh, image is being created. You create one image, you run the one virtual machine server, you do whatever you want it, and convert that into the images. And that is what we do that. And we're going to show you that as well. Okay, so Satish, how can we cluster these instances? So again, when we say how, there's a hell lot of things which we need to do that. And uh, so I would answer for time being, yes, you can do that. But how is, again, you'll have to learn many more things before, you know, answering these questions. Uh, this question from the Prashant, why did not the window work first time? And the reason was very simple. When I initiated the VMs of Windows, at that time, the security policy which I had set it up without the, the port 3389 for the RDP. So that means while setting the windows, it did not approve the RDP connection. So while setting up the VMs, what happens, it goes to this properties, okay? It goes to the properties, remote settings, and enable this place. And in that first case, it was enabled, do not allow remote connection to this computer. Next time when I did modify my security groups, it, al it allowed it with this allow remote connection with this computer. So that way I got the access. And in the first instance, I could not get the access. Okay, so this is how it is. Okay, any other questions which I can see? Uh, Chandra, are you going to explain, uh, just again, let me read your question. Are you going to explain even the EC2 container services? Are you going to ex explain even the EC2 container services? Yes. So it's not about the explaining the container services. You have to experience the container services. And you will not be able to explore and experience and understand the container services until you understand the container concept. Okay, so container is nothing but here you are talking about the EC2 containers when you talk about the, then we talk about the Docker. Okay, so we'll have to understand the first container concept, how it is different for the virtualization and what are the services we can use on the EC2 platform. And then you can try it out EC2 containers. So that will help you to understand. So uh, Docker is again is a lengthy topics and I, I wish I could have got this time for the same as well, but we have a very limited time and uh, I will not be able to showcase uh, the Docker front. I will not be able to showcase the demo on the Docker front, but 
what you can do you can enroll for the next uh, webinar and probably and you can advise the skill speed uh, coordinator to you know launch some docker uh, container concept related webinar and probably i'll do that in that session okay so uh, there's one question from the Sanjay. I missed the username part of the Linux login. Uh, so there's nothing great about it. Uh, you just I'm just going to repeat the same thing. In order to log in to your EC2 instance, where no matter whether it's in Linux or Windows, you need a three information. You need a username. Here we have a password a keys. You need a host IP address or host name. In this case, we have got the IP address and the username. So that three information you need and for the Linux we use the putty we first convert the PM file to the PPK file and use the putty and then we log into this machine using the RDP we basically do the RDP through the remote desktop connection and for that we need to have the port open okay that's uh, how it is okay so there's one question from the Varun I had opted for the DevOps course but how come I got involved for the AWS I don't know Okay, so Varun, uh, probably you should speak with uh, the coordinator of the skill speed uh, and they will help you with it. And we do have a, a DevOps uh, webinar, which is tomorrow, uh, same time. Okay, same time means uh, uh, 10 p.m. IST. So probably you can, you may also attend the DevOps webinar, but AWS is one of the great platform which facilitate the lots of solutions and which can, which can solve lots of problem for the DevOps. So I believe the, you are in the right session and learning the AWS is a great things as well. Okay, so, okay. So next question is, can you please log in more time Linux instance? Yes, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. We have time and we have uh, agenda already set. So we're going to do that. Okay, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop taking the questions more because I have got the four minutes over and I think I should be able to get this machines up and running Windows and here I'm going to connect with this machine and generate the password and now it says, it says like if you want to upload the password here. So let's choose a file, skill speed, and a PM file. We'll have to upload it and then decrypt the password. And this is the one. So we got the username and password as well for these two machines. And now I'm going to use the same thing over here. So let me close here. Username, I just paste it. And then this is the password, which is lengthy. It should work and now you can see this certificates yes come continue and now I got this access to this machine Okay, and I know it's damn slow because of RAM is very low assigned to this. And this is how you log into the machine. So this is the way we can get the Windows as well as Linux machines up and running using the EC2. So what I'm going to do, we have spent, uh, we have got the good uh, uh, amount of information we spent to get the servers up and running with the EC2 instance and uh, so let me let me uh, cover the, some of the things which we have uh, got this with uh, PPT as well so that way it will help us to get in line so now we have got the introduction of the EC2 so that's the reason I showed you the demo first and then uh, discussion later because that way you can help uh, you can visualize the things in a much better perspective so now you are in a position to understand the AWS in much better uh, than before so now you need a machine so you can go and try EC2 get the machines as you want it increase the the select the, your operating system uh, select the RAM capacity select the CPU number of CPU select the storage select the security groups and you are done 
and then you have a security groups where you can set the ports and things like that. So in a simple word, now you know that what is the EC2, Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, Amazon EC2 provides scalable computing capacity, virtual machine in the AWS cloud. It's simple, virtual machines in AWS cloud. You can have as many virtual machines you wanted and you can decrease, increase the capacity the way you want it. That's all about the EC2. Okay, so basically, uh, what is the more? Let's uh, let's try to understand more about the EC2. So it's available in the different locations, and when we say different location, like we have all the reasons where you can get the EC2. Okay, you have a different choices of the operating system, the families, you know, operating system families and things like that. You have a uh, many platforms operating system supported. You can import and export the virtual machines. That's the beauty of it. You can, if you want your own machines to be there and you can create your own AMIs, which we, which we have discussed. You can integrate AWS, uh, you can integrate EC2 instance with any of other AWS services. We, remember AWS has a wide range of services from the you know, data center to the DevOps, to the development team, to IT operation team, to the artificial intelligence, big data, machine learning, and many more solutions they have it. A database of, uh, so all these things you can integrate with. You can purchase the options based on your uh, optimizations and things like that. So that's how. So basically list of operating systems supported, yes, you know that by now. It supported almost all the operating system, but you have it. So starting from the Linux, all the flavors and then Windows, all the flavors and things like that. Okay, all the software is get supported. So it supports, uh, you can have as many software, whatever the software you wanted, SAP, LAMP, WAMP, Drupal, Joomla, XYZ, and many more things. So you can have it. Integrate with the other, AWS services as easy as possible. You have a, a different model of the, you know, capacity in terms of CPU and RAM. And uh, I have already shown you the demo, so probably it is uh, now not having that much of importance. Uh, you can also define the memory, CPUs, and things like that. Here it is. So this is the place where we're going to define the storage. And you have uh, two kind of storage. So where you have a high frequency Intel Xeon, which is where you can have a more IOPS and SSD, which is the Amazon default storage type. Okay. Uh, and that's having a lesser IOPS input out put operations per second. Okay. So this is one of the things like every instance is assigned with a private IP address. Remember private IP address, which is a internal to the do domain and servers. Okay, every instance also has a public IP address, which is you are using to access the machines. Okay, you can also assign the, each machine with the static IP address that we call it elastic IP address, and that is basically paid services that you'll have to pay for it. Okay, so what happens? So, uh, once you got the EC2 machines, okay, up and running. And after that, if you start, stop it, and then if you start it again, you will lose the IP address, the one which you was assigned earlier, until you assign the elastic IP address, okay? So, because sometimes what, what happens like, you don't need a, 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 a elastic IP address, you don't need a static IP address, you need a only internal IP address which may change, so that's not a problem. But sometimes you do need a, uh, the the public static IP address because of some reason of hosting the uh, uh, HTTP services or something like that. So in that case, it will help you. And then uh, you have a keys which we have I have shown you the demo, so yeah, which will help you to access the machines. And not only on the machines which you use for all the uh, for the all the machines which you create with these keys. So it will allow you to access the same keys will work will work for the thousands of machines if you have created those machines using the the keys those keys and then groups which you have discussed is nothing but a kind of firewalls where we can control the ports you can open the inbound and outbound operations and you can create exceptions enable and disable the ports and their accesses respectively so that is how it is and like this so now i hope you got it uh, uh, by now, like what is this EC2 instance and things like that. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to have a, let's say five or ten minutes of, let's have a ten minutes of break so I can grab some tea or coffee and meanwhile what uh, we will do that, I will transfer this uh, uh, the control to the coordinator, skill speed coordinator and probably he will be the one who can also help you to understand some of the questions and also help you to clarify some of the questions, what you have it. So I'll have a ten minutes of break and I'll be back in ten minutes. Uh, meanwhile, so uh, are we having any coordinator uh, from SkillSpeed who can take a control and answer some of the questions of the participants, what they have it? Uh, Manish, are you there in this call? Santanu? Okay, so no problem. Uh, so I, I think it's a great opportunity where everyone can go and grab some coffee or tea uh, and then we're going to get connected in 10 minutes. So it's now 10, 40, 11.40 for me. So I'm going to come back at 11.50 and then we're going to start the journey of AWS in the uh, another one hour or something like that. Okay, so see you guys in some time. Okay, so I think uh, let's get started. I hope everyone has got the cup of tea or coffee. Okay, so still I'm waiting for my uh, access to be granted over the screen so I can show and share my screen and I'm not able to see that. Uh, so uh, are we having coordinator in, so can you please assign me the access? Okay, so guys can you see my screen? I'm just, uh, are you able to see my screen? Okay, great. Okay, so uh, till now, what we did, we discussed so many things in terms of AWS, cloud computing, and most important things like EC2, from where we can get the virtual servers as many wanted in whatever the configuration we wanted. And we also learned how to how to get those, uh, the machines up and running and things like that. So now, what you're going to do, we're going to experience some of the things like we're going to uh, destroy some of the machines. So let's say I'm going to destroy these these two machines, skill speed one and skill speed two. And now let, let me destroy only one machine. So I want to destroy this machine. So I should not paying for this. So if, the moment I realize like the requirement for this uh, server is over, I should destroy I this terminate this machine. So how can you do that? So you go to the action and click here and click on the instance state and not stop, not reboot, but I terminate because I want to destroy this uh, instance. I just do the terminate. So I just click on the terminate and now it's saying setting down and after that it will be terminated in some time. But in this case, case speed 2, what I want, I want to just stop it. And remember, before before stopping this instance, remember your IP address is 54. I let me rather copy, so I should not lose this IP address. Your IP address is 54.194.2.5.152. And what I'm going to do with this machine, I am going to stop it. Okay, here it is. That's all. So I. Another skill speed to what I did is stop it. And third machine, what I'm going to do, I'm going to reboot it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to also note down this one and let's make it stop. And this IP address, which I'm going to make it reboot, remember, reboot, okay? So third one, which I'm going to do is reboot. So I'll click action, instant state and reboot. And now you're going to observe the difference between the terminate versus stop versus reboot. So now you see that I terminated. That means I lost that VM. You lost VM. You lost the data. You lost, lost every configuration. Whatever you did in that machine. It's like a delete. Permanent shift uh, delete actually. It's a permanent delete. You will not be able to recover it after you terminate the instance. You will not be able to recover any data inside that VM. Okay, it's lost permanent. Okay, but what about if you stop it? So now I just stop it and I, I just lose the public IP address. Okay, I just lose the public IP address. And now if I want to start it, 
I will get the new I public uh, new public IP address okay so that is the thing so what is the observation if you stop it and then you start it then you get the new public IP address that's that's the thing so now you see that this IP address which you got it after the stopping it so after the stopping you got this IP address and this IP address and this IP address which you had initialized earlier both are different so you got the two different IP address and that's the thing so you have to stop it and consider whenever you stop it the IP address will be changed but here is a six here is a scenario I just rebooted the Windows machine but if you look at it the IP address is not changed right IP address is not changed so here is once you reboot any EC2 instance then IP address will not change so IP address will be changed only in case you stop and then start not in case of reboot so that's a catch here you'll have to remember so now what we have done we have got the word termination and remaining are uh, re rebooted and things like that so cool now what what are the other options we have it so considering like skill speed one which is terminated let's try skill speed two and now go to the action and here you can see that instance settings and in that you can add many things so you can see that you can add more tags you can attach to auto scaling so many of the questions related to uh, whether my three of my server got down so if automatically if it will down what is going to do so of course you're going to work with the auto scaling group and which uh, is not a part of this uh, uh, webinar but uh, we'll be doing as part of the another training as well okay and uh, here uh, you can see the logs you can see the screenshot you can see the user data and things like that now someone asked like how can i create my own amis AMI means Amazon machine image so that way you configure once and then after that you just want that instance a number of times 100 250 or something so how can you create it so considering my skill speed 2 okay skill speed 2 is the uh, T micro and it's a Linux RHL 7.3 and considering this is my VM which is stable and it has all the pre built configurations and all so you can create images actually so you can create images you can have image name let's say skill speed template skill speed template AMI AMI something like that so that way you can create your template and then create an image and then that is how so now next time whenever you create an image you can use that image rather than any public community or Amazon provided images so how can you do that just go to the launch instance my AMIs so now earlier there was no my AMIs but here you created the AMIs and now you can select this one and remaining options are same okay so that way you can uh, also try your own EMIs and things like that <laughs> now what are you going to discuss uh, so I'm going to show you some of the more options what you have here so let's discuss about skill speed 2 and select networking so here if you want to change the network security groups remember security groups is nothing but a firewalls okay so something like a firewalls where you uh, configure the ports allow and disallow enable and disable the ports actually so you can change the firewall of these machines which you have configured so suppose considering you have configured uh, one firewall for one machine so you want to change it to other firewall you can do that you can also attach to the network interfaces which we have not talked about it as well and you can also enable the security uh, enable the monitoring cloud watch is one of the monitoring services which AWS provides using that you can monitor the health of the services CPU RAM storage up and running or something like that so you can try it out all the stuff okay so these are the, the basics of the AWS EC2 instance services which you have got it and by using is EC2 instance you can get the the desired virtual machines the way you want it the number of you want what what configuration you want what operating system you want so all these things you can configure it so I'm sure there's no confusion anymore around uh, the EC2 instance and things like that uh, so now I'm what I'm going to do I'm going to spend some time five minutes of time frame uh, on your questions before uh, moving on to the other topics so uh, do you have any questions uh, before getting to the 
another topics any question okay so this is a question from the mukesh kumar does it provide some sort of f5 or load balancing services that can front end my n number of machines running on of course yes this is one of the uh, one of the beauty where while setting up you can set the load balancers also okay so you can set the load balancers i am again is a part of the networking uh, concept so uh, which is not a part of this webinar but uh, it will be a part of the other training of the uh, aws okay so there's one question from the pavan we are accessing the instance remotely how can we access them from the console so when we say console when that means i couldn't understand the what do you mean with the console can you redefine these questions again when you say the consoles like you mean to say like uh, it the application is running on 80 port 8080 80 port or 8090 port or something like that then again you have to do nothing but the open the port and then uh, run the application in the machine with that particular port and open that uh, um, server so that is how it is next question is uh, we are accessing then uh, no there is a question from the madhu you are going to share this session videos and ppts so basically you are going to get the information all this information from the skill speed coordinator and uh, probably he'll help you with that okay so there is one more question from the satish uh, uh, can you please explain me why ip is changing why while stopping the instance and not while reboot yeah that's the thing actually so it's a behavior of the ec2 instance okay it's a behavior here what we are doing right now is we are using the ip address this is again ip address public ip address it's, you can say it may be static ip address if you do not shut it down these machines what amazon is doing they are having the pools of ip address and they are providing you these ip address free of cost so they say like you can use the random ip address as long as you want to run the vms i will give you the access but the moment you stop the vms and start it again then i'll have to give the another ip address to that uh, assigned to that uh, vm so you can access those machines but not the same but in case if you want the static ip address for these machines all which what are you going to do? You're going to get the elastic IP address. Elastic IP address is a permanent IP address which will never change. But again, that will be cost added to that. So if you want to get the elastic IP address, you have to scroll down this EC2 instance and go back to the place where we have networks and security and you have to click on the elastic IPs. Okay. And here you can buy as many elastic IP addresses you want. And after you buying this IP address, you can allocate this IP address to the each virtual machine, each EC2 instance, the way you want it. Okay. So in that case, no matter whether you reboot or stop, your IP address will remain the same. Okay. So that is the one of the way Amazon is selling their IP address, and uh, you are paying for that. Okay. So I hope this that answered your question, Mukesh. Okay, so any, any other questions? So it's uh, how the OS is more advantage other than the cloud services. Okay, so there's a question from the Vaskar Rao. Uh, he's asking, Hi Rajesh, how access AWS has more advantages other than the cloud services? Uh, so when I say like advantages, it's very difficult to uh, do the comparison because more or less all the platform which includes like uh, Amazon AWS and then uh, Azure from the Microsoft and uh, Google Cloud which is, has come nowadays uh, almost they provide this something similar infrastructure but the thing is like Amazon is a very old player in this market very very old player in this market and their products is much more mature and much more popular and much more easy to learn because of the lots of learning materials are available uh, uh, here so you have all these things 
compared to that google cloud which is primarily uh, uh, selling the services around the kubernetes and docker containers and all and the top of that you can have as many servers you want it but again the kind of services is being offered by the ec i mean amazon is not been uh, by them google azure again you can get the something similar infrastructure with the different naming conventions and terminologies but uh, azure is much cheaper than the aws the reason is like azure is launched recently in last few years uh, and uh, aws is a major player uh, from last many years so uh, aws is popular and azure is not popular again uh, like uh, in terms of let's say security scalability in terms of performance in terms of uh, things it's again you get everywhere the same thing i mean you ask for 10 gigs of ram you get the 10 gigs of ram you ask for the uh, uh, processor speed uh, storage you get everything the same as you want to get it in azure or to google or or, uh, or 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 on amazon it's just like a uh, pricings are different and maturity levels are different okay so that is how okay so there's a question from the satish are there virtual machines are these virtual machines hosted on uh, a hypervisor hyper v or exx or something like that satish this is a kind of their secret information and aws would not like to reveal it so i have no idea because aws has not revealed this information this is a secret uh, their business secret actually so why they are how come they are facilitating such a large infrastructure what are the hypervisor whether they are using hypervisor or something else we have no idea about it but I can tell you for the sure they are not using ESX and hypervisor like that. They have something their own which they have developed and uh, they have kept it separate. So that information is not publicly available. I believe. Okay. So any other questions with before you want me to get into the other services of the AWS? Okay, so there's the last question I I'm going to take uh, now. Uh, for, for now, I like a uh, uh, question from the Bhaskar Rao. Why are financial clients worried to move to cloud? They can use the private cloud, right? So here is the things. Uh, uh, here is the things like uh, when, yes, of course you can create a private cloud. You have a software right now available. Uh, many open source are, uh, solutions are available, you can create a private cloud. But the things like, the most important things like uh, uh, skill set. Whether are you having the right skill set in your organization or in the market, which you can find easily. Second thing like, if you have set up the private cloud network, you need to require the human resources to maintain that network, maintain the infrastructure. So. Are you going to provide it? Whereas in the opposite direction, on AWS, you get everything. You don't have to maintain it. AWS is maintaining for you. Just to go and get it as many servers you want the way you want it. So in on AWS, all the organization is become a user. They are using their services. But here, in case of the private cloud network, you are going to set up the network. So you're going to have the talent first. You're going to have the right set of the tools and infrastructure and uh, servers and uh, physical servers and things like that. And on top of that, you have to extend it, enhance it, uh, auto scale it and so many things, which again, which cost you and is going to spend time. Right now, organization want to spend less time on the infrastructure, more time on the, their products, their services. So because this infrastructure which they are going to spend time on it, there's not going to benefit them. So that's, that's where uh, that uh, they would like to move to the cloud uh, rather than setting up the private cloud. Okay, so now let's get started and let's discuss some of the other features what we have is module s3 so let me tell you aws has many many products many services and uh, basically three hours is too less for this all the services uh, what we're going to do we're going to try it out two more services basically one of them are like amazon s3 
and one more which I'm going to try it out uh, and the storage so let me grab that PPT and one of the uh, thing is like we're going to try storage okay so let me see if I have missed anything uh, I think I have not missed him. So let me start with this uh, S3. Okay. So now S3 is one of the services where you can use for the storage. Okay. So as it says, Amazon S3 is secure, durable, highly scalable, object storage accessible. Object storage accessible via simple web services interface. So when we say object storage accessible, you have to be very careful and just understanding it. Okay, because uh, there's a various kind of storage and one of the storage is like object storage in which you are storing the whole files as an object, as an object whole file system as an object. So it restored and retrieve any amount of the data for use alone and together with the AWS services. So that is how. So what are the S3 features? So it's one of the features. Actually, let me tell you, in storage, there are so many of, uh, things which is, we have available. One of the uh, component we have is like S3. S3 is a durable, it is available, low cost, scalable, high performance, secure, integrated, easy to as and many more things. So basically, as you can in our cell, it's like it's a kind of place where you can store as many data, unlimited data with a very less cost, with a high performance accessibility, accessibilities and things like that. And it's a very secure. So you can have it. And here we have a, a difference between the Amazon S3 and EBS. EBS, I did not talk about it, uh, but it's one of the other way. Uh, another way of the storage in that is called a block storage, where it's S3 is your object storage. Uh, Amazon S3 is a scalable, uh, block storage EBS is not scalable. Uh, it requires, you can host the static websites and stuff like that with S3, but in with EBS you can basically have all the database. So basically database you cannot have in S3. Database you can have with the EBS, PostgreSQL, MySQL and many more. Okay, so that's the way around. So while using it, S3, what you have to do? You have to create a buckets. So let me do one thing. Let me show you the demo first and then talk about these terminologies because probably if I show you the demo first and then talk about the terminologies, then my, you might be able to correlate the things and it will make more sense to you rather than first talking about it. So now I go to the uh, AWS instance and here under the storage, you can see that you have S3, EFS, Glacier, Storage Gateway, and so many things you have it. So I'm going to use the S3. S3 is one of the kind of the database, a uh, storage, not database, sorry. So I click on it. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a bucket. So in S3, whatever you want to store, you have to store inside the bucket. So you can have as many buckets you want. So bucket is nothing but a like a kind of place where you can put the n number of objects, n number of things, bucket, okay? So I'm going to create one bucket here and I'm going to name this bucket, let's say skill speed and create it. So now I've got the bucket created and it says like this name is not available. So probably, you know, uh, someone has already created this bucket and uh, probably me or someone else. So I got that new name, which is bucket uh, skill speed 122. So now I got this bucket. Okay. And now inside that bucket, now you have to store the objects and op storing the object is nothing but uh, storing your files. Okay. So how can you upload these files? You can upload the files. Let's upload the files, some of the files like, uh, uh, Manually, you can upload through the command lines also. You can upload through the uh, APIs also. So there's so many other ways in which you can uh, you can upload the files. And one of the things which I'm trying right now, manual ways. So let me try uploading this uh, PPTs file. Start uploading.
and now you have these files so you got these files and you can store as many files you want again s3 is very cheap very scalable very you know high performance and things like that so now you got this uh, file uploaded and you can do whatever you want you can open this file download it you want to create more folders and you want to upload more and stuff like that you can make it public uh, so no access is required to access these resources the important thing is like how can you access this bucket how can you access this bucket? So you have to click on the skill speed one two two bucket. Okay, I click on it, and now I go to the properties. Click on the properties, and now I have to put permissions. Here I select the permissions, and I want to define who should be allowed to access this uh, this one. So as of now, what I want, I want to give the permission so it should be available for the public uses. Everyone should be able to access, not only me or someone else, okay? So everyone should be able to access, upload, view, and uh, edit permissions probably, let's give it, okay? Because it's not a harm for time being, but for you, it will be harm for sure for if you're using one production, okay? And save it. So now I have saved this bucket. I have uploaded, created a bucket, uploaded some files. Now I'm going to get the, the link. So how can you get the links? So now I am going to click on it and I should get the address which is here. So copy this path. As of now, it's not, it says, uh, I'm going to looking for the address. Mm. Yeah. So if I click on the bucket, here is my address. So, so now still it says access denied probably that I have to give the permissions again everyone open view edit save now I click OK and refresh now you see that file has come so this way you can upload as many files you want in the bucket you can give the permission at the bucket label or the the label which is uh, at the file label and you can start uh, using those files and things like that okay so this is the one of the way you can store the file now you see that hell lot of functionality you can find in the right hand side one of the things which is a permission which I did talk about what about static web site hosting so this place is also very useful to host your static website remember s3 is an object based storage not like a block store based on storage so basically this will help you to host your static file like HTML, CSS, JavaScript and many more like that. Not like a PHP or something like that. Which requires the process and compiler. Okay. So this will help you to set up those. So what you can do, you can host as many static websites. You can map it with it. And here it says do not enable website hosting. Enable website hosting and redirect all the website hosting like that. So here you have to set the index.html error document 404 error or something like that and you can set it up and you can start using it. So this is another features which you have it here. Now logging. Logging in this you can see that who has uh, is like a logging is like enabling the logging and trying to find out what has been done on my bucket. Okay. Events. So in this case, you're going to find out what are the events which is happening. Like there's many services which is like a mail services, queue services, report services, and so many things which you can uh, set it up. One important features which you have here is like a versioning. As, as I said, it is an object-based storage, so you can also do the versioning. Like one version on the top of that you update the same files twice then thrice or fourth you can enable the versioning so basically s3 is very helpful in terms of enabling the versioning here you will help you the with the life cycle as of now it's lot least used 
cross region replication so this is one of the features so remember as i said you, one ec2 instance if you have created one region you cannot you cannot uh, use you cannot transfer to other region but here in case once you have a bucket in one region you can replicate with the other bucket with this options like a cross region replication so you can re enable the versioning and on top of that you can uh, enable the replication as well you can have as many tags you wanted and like that so there's so many other functionality we have it here and the bucket so basically in a nutshell amazon s3 is a kind of storage in which you can store all the object based files which is very cheap to store it here it will do the versioning it has a permissions defined and you can make it available for any one of them which you want it and uh, it is highly scalable highly available and highly secure okay so this is the one of the other way of the storing the uh, storage on aws so now i'm going to spend some time on answering all the questions before that if you want to remove the bucket you just click on it basically it's the bucket is a chargeable basically so if you want to remove it just click on it bucket create and skill speed so to remove this one delete Okay, so I've done with it. Now I should get rid of this name later. It's not required for timing. Okay, so now I'm going to answer some of the questions. What you have is related to the storage with S S3. Okay, so there's a question from the uh, Ranthi. How? Can you please show how to upload from the command line? So there's a AWS APIs which is available. You have to try it out. What are you going to do? You're going to set it with the access keys, token, and all this stuff information, and the, with the keys, and you're going to upload the files with the command line. So again, probably we have no uh, great amount of time where you, which you can set it up and then show you. But of course, uh, I can show you uh, in the upcoming sessions uh, for of the AWS. Okay, so any other questions related to S3? Okay, so there's one question from the how to integrate EC2 to S3 instance. So when you want to integrate from the EC2 S3, so remember S3 you get a URL. HTTP or XYZ something like that you get a URL and this is the something like a URL okay this is your URL which you get it so basically this path you can use to upload download or any files not only from the EC2 but from the anywhere okay from the anywhere so you can use it uh, this one Okay, so what are the different types of stories? So uh, I'm going to talk about this stuff, these questions in a some time, and probably I'll also discuss about the block stories and things like that in some time. Uh, let me see that any other questions. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce you one of the things which we have. Okay, so one last question which I'm going to take it from the Anatony. Where should I get name servers? So I, I couldn't understand this question. Name servers means you want to set up your own name servers, right? In that case, what you're going, you're going to do, you can create your own virtual servers. In that, you can configure the name server software and basically dedicate all of your networks accordingly. So it's again, it's a lot of planning you have to do uh, in order to uh, get it done on the the uh, uh, on the EC2, it's not like it's very difficult to do that. It's just like you need to know how to do that. Okay. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to spend time on that understanding the kind 
kind of storage because many of your question which is related to the kind of storage what you have it okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to answer some of them and let me open up my EPT for the storage okay so now let's just understand the storage so when we talk about the storage at AWS you have a various kind of storage one of the storage kind you have which we call it infidel storage which you if you experience this kind of storage with the, all of your EC2 instance which you have created you got the, this kind of instance this kind of storage okay so if you see that here here each VMs you got this storage which is nothing but a, this storage actually the one which I am talking about okay and th this is basically uh, it's basically for the instance store as we you have created EC2 instance it is basically for the instance store okay this is a temporary block label storage okay when we say like a block label storage like uh, uh, in a simple word it's like a, it's like a, it's like a file which you store in the block label storage like a uh, normal hard disk that's like a block label storage okay uh, normal hard disk which you have in your laptop or in your desktop uh, that's your block label storage so basically this is the block level storage where you can run the operating system any database services any programs you can install it and a number of things you can do that but object level storage is like the place where you can store the files and uh, uh, and the files can be accessible through HTTP services or like a file FTP services like that or something. Okay, so in this MFIT Merrill storage, it's a temporary block storage. It is a free storage which you get with the each EC2 instance. So remember, you have got 30 GB of the storage with each of these EC2 instance. So that is basically is a free. Okay, so uh, in this case, data is lost when instance is terminated so as you remember uh, we have terminated the ec2 ec2 instance and we lost everything so for from the aws perspective there is no sla actually so even though if you lose any data aws is not taking any guarantee over those data if you even though if you are using those things aws is not taking up so basically what you're going to do it's best practices to use the ebs system again it's another kind of storage which you're going to we are going to discuss in no buy actually okay so basically there is no sla for this kind of storage access speed is not guaranteed it one this storage only is given by the aws just to run your operating system nothing else you should not store any data even though if you're storing it get lost AWS is not responsible for that okay and then like that so I, I did show you the demo while setting up the 30 gigs of hard disk so I think that is done now this is the second kind of storage which we have it and I also show you the demo so now this is the S3 this is the uh, object based storage okay this was introduced in 2006 okay you can access does this storage using HTTP and HTTPS only okay okay so remember the blocks the block level storage you can access through it's just like just like your storage in your laptop or something like that uh, you can store in this uh, storage s3 storage you can store the audio video images you can store the replications backup and many more things uh, the bucket size is unlimited and but the object side and when we say the objects are like each file size has to be maximum 5 TB like the each object size should be not should not be more than 5 TB and 5 TB I think is a too much but you know this is a very helpful once you are trying to process the files which is coming from the you know NASA or something NASA and uh, you know uh, like that so they have a files which is in a, a terabytes and all these files has to be stored have to process all the images has to be stored and so many things videos they get it 
n number of terabytes of views they get it as a thing. So basically, these kind of requirements can be served here actually. Okay. Again, price on storage used and transfer out. So it's basically the price. Price are defined based on the use and then how much download you do that, not how much upload you do that, how much download you do that, based on that file is being decided, I mean cost is defined, decided. And it's again, it's not a file system, it's an object based storage and, and SLA is for this uh, S3 is 99.99%. Basically, all the services which AWS uh, provides, they have SLA something somewhere close to it. Okay. Another kind of storage which we have like a EBS in that we have a two types of okay uh, this is again we are discussing about the S3 in this we have a standard storage which is with the uh, uh, basically it's the same thing but the thing is like uh, the SLA is different here so let's leave it this one for time being and I did the things third kind of storage which is the EBS EBS is nothing but a kind of block storage this is a real storage actually. So if you want to do, if you want to store your database or application services or any sort of things you want to do, you use these services and this is not free of cost. Remember, the first kind of storage which you use, uh, which was coming free of cost as part of the instance creation. But this is the third kind of storage which you have, which we have to create it and mount it. You have to create it and mount it. That's all the way we want to use it. And this is not accessible through internet. Okay. You have to mount it. It's a first instance file system for the EC2. Okay. And uh, like that. So, and it can be transferred between the availability zone. It supports the incremental snapshot. And uh, it can, EBS leverage the S3 for the, S3 for the snapshot storage. So what you can do, you can have the, uh, EBS snapshot stored at S3. So that's the one thing. And provision IOPS. So when we say provision IOPS, you can define the the IOPS operation like input out, output per seconds operation on this. So if you want the more IOPS, you have to pay more. You have, if you want the less IOPS, you have to pay less. Like that. So now I am going to show you the, this demo because I have shown you the first two demo and third demo which I'll have to show you now. So EBS. So what you're going to do, you're going to for the EBS, you're going to click on the EC2 data, I mean uh, AWS services, and under the storage, you're going to select EFS. Probably this not not here. So you'll have to collect the EC2 itself. I'm looking for the EBS. So we're going to get it. You're going to scroll down and click on the volumes. If you see that elastic block store, okay. And here you're going to click the volumes, and now you're going to you can see these, these are the volumes which was created. So these volumes are ephemeral volumes, like these are the temporary, which will be which will be uh, uh, SLA is not given, uh, AWS is not giving any uh, SLA for these uh, these volumes. Basic basically this is the ephemeral actually. But now I'm going to create a EBS volumes. So create a volume. So now you want to define what is the size. So basically 100 gigs of size and uh, here you can define the your own speed provision general purpose like SSD which is from the AWS. But if you want to more IOPS you have to pay more for that. But uh, again you have a many magnet, magnetic uh, storage you want throughout the optimized STD, cold STD and many more things specifications are being given. But let's go with the general purpose SSD and then 100 gigs of space and which availability zone I want because I'm using Ireland reason so I have a three availability zone let's keep it in 1B okay and snapshot ID I don't want to snapshot this one as of now okay so let's create it let me refresh and now you see that this volume has been created Okay, there's no snapshot for this. So I have not created snapshot. Snapshot is like a, taking a backup automatically to different availability zone. So if you have created in A, snapshot will be taken in B. If you have taken B, snapshot will be taken in A, I like that. So this is a nice way to take a backup. So now I've got this, uh, uh, I've got this a, uh, uh, storage. Now I have to 
attach to it how can you attach it so if you want to attach to send any any ec2 instance so click on it click attach volume and now select the instance type so you'll have to select the instance app so i don't remember the instance app so what i'm going to do cancel this go to the ec2 dashboard fire running instances and i'm going to get the instance id so probably i want to uh, attach to uh, skill speed 2 this is the machine instance id so i'm going to uh, attach to this id so copy it go to the volume select the volume which you have created which with 100 gigs attach to it and then search the instance type and it should be getting it and here is the keys actually so if you remember here it says in eu eu west 1b so the instance should be because i created the 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 the, the storage ebs storage uh, volume in the eu west 1b so my instance also should be in eu west 1b okay so as of now i think there is no instance available in that zone and as i correctly said everything is in one way so what i'm going to do i'm going to create in one way this time so let's create a volume new volume i'll delete this volume because i don't need any more the availability zone has to be in the same uh, things so one a i'll select it one a creation is done let me refresh it and now i'm going to attach to and now i'm going to search this yes i got it here it is skills put to and the mount should be happening with this storage this location and attached and now after that login you will see 100 gigs of space mount at the certain location which during uh, during the location we did it so, which is here dev stf this is the location we are going to access 100 gigs of things so now you should store all the files database schema applications anything which you think is important for you you should store in this mount rather than in the system default mount so that way yeah that way uh, AWS is taking the guaranteed services like 99.99% your data will be backed up secure optimal available and scalable so it can be possible so now uh, it is a thing so now you can see this attached now you log into the, the instance which is skill speed 2 and you will be able to access that 100 gigs of storage at this level so with this uh, let me recap the stuff in terms of storage in storage you have a three kind of storage uh, one is like mferl which you get it with the each instance which is the default given by the aws second is s3 storage third one is the ebs which i show you so do we have any question about storage now any question okay so there's one question from the Benkateswara uh, glacier so glacier is uh, let me put it in this way mm. AWS is having a glacier which is a kind of let's say I'll give you some perspective here before that talking about the glacier uh, there's some data which you need to store it let's say you have a 10 tv of the data which you don't want to refer every day or every week or every month but you want to store it somewhere probably you need it at some point of the time but the thing is your organization you want to store it but you don't have a budget your organization is not giving budget to store that much of the data toward the ebs because ebs is much costlier and and ebs why you want to store it the ebs because you don't need to access this data every day probably once in a month probably once in a two month or two month three months something like that so you are looking for some sort of solution some sort of uh, storage which is very damn cheap damn cheap than ebs okay damn cheap than s3 storage and you need it only at the certain times 
and when you need it you can request that to be up and running and use it and again go back to the sleep mode like that so glacier is a kind of services which is not available every time you store once forget for some time later once you need it you request that to be up and running and you it will become up and running and then again it will go and go into the sleep mode and then you will not be able to so in this way but the beauty of this you can spend you can store large amount of the data huge amount of the data on glacier and by paying almost nothing so glacier is a kind of services which is not highly available but still you will be able to save the data over the very cheapest cost so is that answer your question Okay, so next question from the Randhir, in EBS scenario, if we terminate the instance, we don't lose the data. Uh, yes, that's correct, uh, Randhir. EBS, because EBS is a permanent storage. Okay, it's a block-based storage, permanent storage. So even though your instance is, instance is, uh, um, let's say, it's uh, uh, terminated, you will not lose that data okay again that is also being snapshot you can do the snapshot also so snapshot will be always in the different availability zone so that way automatic backup is also there if you set it up so okay so this one question from the prashant can you quickly go through the demo of the ebs once again please okay so i can do that quickly i go to the ec2 Click, go to the volumes under the elastic block store, click one volumes and click 100 gigs of data under the availability zone 1A. I don't want to take any snapshot for timing and then got it. And now you got the another volumes which you can see here after this start. Now you can see that it's available. Now you're going to attach to the some instance using the attach volume. You're going to find out the instance you have in one A, you have five instances running. You can attach to any one and you can start using it. So that way you can create this EBS, attach to it, mount it, start using your, the, the, the mount which you specify during the mount, attach, and then you can use it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to destroy this. Basically, I, I am going to delete this volume and why because the it's basically it's a paid services so i'm just first and before deleting it you have to detach it so one which i deleted first which was not attached to it but right now the first this one is attached so i have to detach first and then only i'll be able to delete it okay so that's the things Let me refresh it and I think it got detached. Now I'm going to delete this one. Okay. And now one more thing which you will have to do that. I'm going to delete the rest of the uh, EC2 instance as well. So let me delete this four, three, terminate, done. And the moment you terminate these two, these three instance, if you look at it, the volumes also getting terminated. So it will be disappeared in the few seconds. That's called the temporary storage, MFRL storage. Okay. And one more thing, uh, you'll have to delete the snapshot if you have created the EBS. So I have I have created an EBS one, so it created a snapshot. So I should delete the snapshot also. Otherwise, unnecessarily it will create a burden on your account. Uh, it's not going to charge for its snapshot, but the thing is like. Uh, 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 you sometimes if you are in the production server if you are using you are not sure about it which one uh, is being used and all the stuff so that way it will confuse you so that way it's, you should always do the cleanup proper cleanup to avoid the mess around here okay so let me answer some of the other questions uh, uh, from the there is one question from the Mukesh Kumar is it mandatory to attach this volume to EC2 instance you mentioned EBS can host database as well so how 
how do we get the DV and what would be the DV connection method. Okay, so it's like this. Uh, it's like this. When you say database servers, then it has a two things. One is like a database files. Another one is a database application which you are running and it's managing that files. So when I say like a database application, database server, you can run on the EC2 instance. But when you want to store the, some database file, which is very important, because if you lose that, if you lose the database server, then you lose nothing because you can get the application once again up and running. But if you lose the database files, then you lose everything. So you, to, you should store the database files, database schemas, database files, and all the supporting files in the EBS rather than inferred. Okay, so that way you can set it up. But with the saying that in the EC2, you can create a database server, you can store the database files at the EBS in storage, but you have a few more services which is related to the database at AWS, which you can also use it in order to use the database services. So some of the services you can see that database, here you can create the relational database servers, DynamoDB, Elastic Cache, Redshift, all this kind of database you can try it out. Uh, I'm so sorry, but this is not a part of this course, but I would have talked about it, this one as well in uh, other sessions. So probably we'll have to do some other sessions on this. Okay, so next question I'm going to answer. Can single ABS attach to the multiple instance? Randir, very much we can do that. We can do that. Uh, uh, we can attach the single ABS and we can attach to the multiple instance actually. So this can be doable. Uh, when we say, uh, there's one question from the Madhu. EBS is stored data. Uh, EBS is stored data is stored like a replica system, like Hadoop or SDF. Uh, probably no. Uh, um, when you say EBS, let's say understand, let's understand it's like a kind of storage uh, which is, uh, which you can mount it. Uh, it's like your, uh, your laptop drive. So you want to add, add one more drive, go ahead and add it. And how, how can you do that? You have to mount it. That's the way you, you're going to use it, right? Uh, there's one question from the Sanjay. Can we reinitiate automatic snapshot post volume creation? Yes, of course. I am disabling it because I don't want to have so many snapshots created automatically, but you can have automated. So while creating the uh, the EBS itself, you're going to tell like where you going to, where you're going to create automatic snapshot. So remember, snapshot will be always created in the another availability zone. So that way, if one availability zone is not available, others will be backed up. So that's how it is. Okay. Okay. So Madhu, there's one question from Madhu Sudan. Can I change the username and password for Windows machine? Can I change the username and password for Windows machine? Yes, you can do so. You can do so. Once you generate a username and password, you can go to this, just like another system, just like your system or my system, I can go and change the password and it will be changed actually. Okay, so there's no, there's no issues as such. Okay, so there's a more question from the Mukesh Kumar. How can we get high availability with these volumes? Let's say this volume fails. Can we get this standby configured in some sort of cluster RSC types of configuration? So that's when we say like high availability. If this volumes, the one which you created fails due to a number of reason, and that is where the the that is where the AWS job is coming. They realize this, the ABS which you have set it up is not available anymore, or it's not accessible anymore, then immediately the snapshot which they have created all base, they are creating all base, will, will use, using that snapshot, they will, they will replace the EBS and create a new EBS with the same sort of data which you have it. So that is the things which will be done by the AWS. So there's one last question which I'm going to take from the Madhu. How many VMs can we create in Fiat Air? So again, this question is conditional. Uh, usually you get 
a permission uh, again it depends on the reason actually and i have used in uh, i have used the california reason i have used the ireland and mumbai as well and i have not tested with the mumbai the limits but i have tested with the ireland and uh, in the ireland we get around 20 machines uh, which is getting created with the aws uh, free tier and this can be increased or decreased based on the discussion with the supports so you can request them to increase or decrease based upon your need okay Okay, so there's one question from Venkatesra. Can you connect to instances? So I think Venkatesra, you missed this part. Uh, we have already showed the demo, so probably uh, uh, you might want to go through the recordings once again to see that how can we connect to the instances. And there's one question from the Venkatesra Rao. Can you please explain EFS also? So uh, I'm so sorry, Venkatesra. I have got the defined agenda to talk about it, and in this certain time, so. Uh, probably I would love to share more information with you and uh, uh, but uh, the thing is like you'll have to attend for this uh, another uh, webinar for the same actually okay so okay so now I've got around five to seven minutes and what I'm going to do I'm going to show you some of the extra features what we have it here so now if you look at it EC2 dashboard, you have so many features. Now, how many running instance? So I have got the two. How many dedicated hosts? I have none. Volumes, have, how many? I have five. And basically, I should not be having the volume five volumes. So let me check why I'm having volume five. Yes. So the, the picture was wrong because I terminated the, 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 all the volumes, uh, which was not needed. So everything is okay now. So now key pairs, I have got the three. Uh, load balances, I have none. I have not set it up anything. Security groups, I have set it up. Snapshot, I have one. Elastic IP, I have none. So like this. Now, if you look at it, uh, the scroll down this places here. Under the instance tab, you see the list of instances which you are running. So as of now, you can see the two instances which I am running, four instances which got, uh, which got uh, uh, disabled. So now you must be wondering, like, how come we are getting this EC2 instance, S3, VPC, and all the stuff. So basically, this is nothing but it's a kind of added, adding and creating your own list. So it's like this. I click on this, unpin it, and now I want to move this, this guy, Elastic Cache, to this place. I got it. Now I want to move to DynamoDB here. I got it. I want to move the cloud front here. And remember, there's so many services of AWS. You can check it out. And then move it, the one which you are using every time. So basically, I'm not using <coughs> a DynamoDB now, but I'm using S3 probably more, or IEM more than, than the, the DynamoDB. So let's move it IEM. So these are the things which I use it. And log this top. So that way you can optimize your views also. So let's get back to the EC2 again. And uh, here is the spot request. To I have not gone for the spots. So if you remember, spots is nothing but a kind of bidding process where you can bid for the, the available EC2 instance which was given by the AWS at the cheapest cost. Okay, reserve instance, I have none actually. And it's again one of the highest paying instance which you have it. And schedule instance, like you want to schedule some activities, uh, purchase schedule instance, like at that time it will be created, it will be deleted and all this stuff, you can do that here. AMIs we have already discussed, it's like creating own AMIs. Some of the other features what you're going to discuss, like volumes we did discuss, snapshot we did discuss, security groups which we have created, one elastic IP I could not create, uh, but let me show you this the probably uh, again this is the paid services so you have to be very careful while using it so you want to allocate the new IP address you get the new IP address this is your static IP address remember this will never change now you want to assign this IP address to any or any of the instance so just click on it and associate address and click on it and select the instance which you want to associate so if you want to if you'll get associated 
this will never be changed until you change it manually. So that way you can assign the address to any EC2 instance with a static IP address as well. Key pairs group is nothing but the one which you talk about. These are the interfaces which you have got it uh, by default. So this is the one which I am using currently, which is this one. Okay, but you can create as many network interfaces you want it. Load balances again you can try it out setting up, but again you'll have to know the uh, the basic of the internet and things like that. And many more options which you have it. Uh, maintenance you know in that you can boot up the new machines you can set up the schedules you can do some upgrades this that and sort of things you can do that so till now what we did talk about we did talk about the only the two features uh, of this uh, the 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 C of the AWS we have so many features available uh, which is like auto scaling, elastic, elasticity, high availability, setting up the DNS servers, setting up the uh, load balancers, setting up the networking, which is like nothing but the, uh, the uh, which is nothing but uh, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, Route 53, and so many things. So we have so many things to learn at this platform. Uh, but as part of the today's webinar, we did talk about the two uh, things, which is like how to how can we get the uh, uh, virtual servers and how can we get the storage. So we got the virtual servers using EC2. We got the storage storage using the EBS and S3, and that is how it is. So uh, with this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap it up this session. And uh, of course, I hope you like this session. And uh, if you have any further question, you can reach out to me and the coordinator for the skill speed. My name is Rajesh Kumar and uh, you can have many more queries. Uh, you can shoot out the email to the coordinator, they will send it to me uh, and then we can get going. So I am having probably five more minutes and in that I am going to answer some of your questions uh, if you have. And then I am going to transfer the call to the coordinator and from there he will Onwards, he's going to take care of the, the remaining questions if it's not answered by me. So uh, there's one question. Can you please talk about the container services for the two to three minutes? Uh, I can talk about it, but I'm so sorry. Two to three minutes is very less to talk about these services. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, it's a kind of platform. When you talk about the container services, the AWS, AWS container service is nothing but the kind of platform where you can create a containers and a GS as possible. So uh, remember the container when you talk about the container is like a Docker engine. Docker engine you can run in the laptop, you can run in the desktop, you can run in the virtual machine, you can run in the cloud. So anywhere you can run it. And the platform which AWS is giving you a platform to run the Docker engine so you can have the container services up and running over there. Okay, so there's one question from the Satish. Can you suggest the material for the AWS DevOps certification? Is online reading enough to clear the test? Uh, no, online reading is not, of course, not enough for the clearing the test. You should be having the right training as well as right course material as well as right practice. Uh, it's not only by the reading you want to clear the test because many questions they'll ask you uh, which will be in a confusion in nature actually, which will be confusing you actually. So again, you might be knowing, but you don't know how to, how, you have not worked within those environment or you have not seen some sort of, you know, labs or demos, so you will not be able to expose with it. Actually. Okay, so there's one question, do you need to register any other session for the AWS services that need to be covered? So basically, uh, I have uh, my coordinator with me, so he's going to answer this question, Sanjay. Uh, he'll, he'll be the right person to talk about. Any other questions which you guys have it? Okay, so I am going to request a coordinator, a Manish or Santanu to uh, take up the remaining questions if possible and then uh, we can get going. Thanks, Sanjay. Thanks. Thank you very much. Are we having any coordinator from SkillSpeed?
I'm wondering, are we having any coordinator from the skill speed? Okay, so guys, it seems like uh, I think we need to wait for a few more minutes before we get the coordinator uh, in this meeting. So probably uh, I will get a few more minutes to interact with you. So uh, what I can do about it is like uh, I can discuss about the containers. Yes, that's the one question which I could not answer because of time. So let me try to answer this question. And uh, when we say container so if you remember physical servers and then in that time when we are using physical servers then if suppose you needed 10 machines 10 servers then you used to buy 10 CPU 10 RAM 10 hard disk, 10 operating system. So that, that means you have to pay for 10. The ultimate purpose of your all the machines was to host the 10 app. And for that you have you, you have bought the 10 CPU, 10 RAM, 10 hard disk, 10 operating system. But what is the actual utilization? So if you look at the on an average actual utilization, it is not more than 10%. I'm just giving you a figure just to you to visualize it. 10%. So that is where we saw that huge wastage in terms of resources. So that is where we started talking about how can we avoid the wastage of the hardware resources. Then we introduced the virtualization. So when we have a virtualization, we can optimize the resources utilization. So we have only one physical server and then in that we have a 10, 10 uh, VMs, virtual machines. We convert it to the same virtual machine, virtual server to 10 VMs. So now we have 10 virtual machines. But in this model also, we have so much of the wastage. And one of the wastage is like hypervisor, which is taking good amount of uh, CPU, which is taking the good amount of CPU plus process. And important things, other things like operating system. For the each VM, you have operating system in place. And that operating system is again is a paid uh, thing so you have to pay for it again each operating system consume the lots of CPU lots of RAM lots of memories and EDC so how can you avoid these resources because my ultimate purpose is to have host the 10 apps rather than you know all this complicated infrastructure and wastage so in this scenario we have got the new technology the evolution has come new things has come and then we got the from the virtualization we got the container concept where you are having the only one label of operating system which you can run at the any places and you can host a 10 application but you it will you can experience that each application is running in their own virtual own environment own different operating system but it is not it is running on the base operating system also so that's a word of the container that's the meaning of the container actually it is a container it will act like a different environment but it is not so that is where the docker has come into the picture so docker is a kind of container based technology and in that what you're going to do we're going to try it out and number of containers and things like that okay so now i think we have a uh, coordinator from the skill speed manish and uh, manish uh, i think i'm done with it and uh, you're going to take care of this uh, session from here onwards can you please take a uh, take care of the questions from the participants? Okay, guys. So I think I've got the confirmation from the coordinator, and what he's going to do, he's going to send out an email to everyone, and those who needs any information, any questions, any queries, you can contact the SkillSpeed directly, and then we'll be able to help you out uh, in terms of training. Again, tomorrow we're going to connect for the DevOps session, which is very important. And uh, we're going to uh, dig out the world of the DevOps, various tools, technology, and some of the uh, some of the exciting labs. Also, we're going to do that. So let's connect tomorrow and then see how it goes. And 
you guys have a very good night and see you tomorrow bye everyone thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed and learned from this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest want to study further subscribe to our paid membership to get a deep dive into each and every topic do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our devops school channel and hit the bell icon to learn more keep learning